Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Navamsha video again. So many requests for new Navamsha videos. So I have collected some questions most frequently asked on the Navamsha, and uh, I have decided to make this video as usual now and in future also. So this time we are back with a very interesting question yet again another hot topic will a bad terrible navamsha destroy my married life should i get married if i have a bad navamsha or should i not okay there you go long time back i had made this video is navamsha my partner's chart and many of you appreciated that video and even till now uh, it gets around three to four to five, sometimes even six, seven hundred views daily. I'm surprised. I didn't know that so many people are confused about Navamsha. Okay. If I had known this before, I would have made uh, this around one or two years back. But gradually I have realized that so many people are horrified about this Navamsha versus D1 or D1 versus D9. Okay. So don't worry. We will uh, declutter everything and clear all the misconceptions uh, pertaining to Navamsha. Okay, so if you have not watched that video, you will find the link somewhere down in the description. And today's video is on. So suppose you have a good D1. Good, uh, somebody told you it's good or you assumed. Uh, and then your D9 is very bad. Okay, so say, same thing. Either you think it is bad or you assume it's bad or some but he told you it's bad okay <laughs> so therefore in such a situation what should we do how do we know if that bad navamsha will actually affect my married life or not or if yes to what extent so what's the answer to this question will a bad navamsha destroy my marriage yes and no it depends <laughs> okay so when does a bad navamsha destroy a marriage and when does a bad navamsha does not destroy a marriage okay if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation the link to my website you will find down in the description section okay what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and yes uh, i started with instagram also so if you have not seen my page there you can go and type exotic underscore astrology Okay, and I also have my Facebook page, so you can like that page also, Exotic Astrology. Therefore, now let's go and discuss what is a bad marriage. So in that Navamsha video, which I had made, I clearly said, or was it in that video? Oh no, after that, I made another video. Will a good Venus save a bad 7th house or a bad marriage, something like so. In that, I said very clearly that... Uh, what does it mean when you say you have a bad married life? It's not like saying, oh, my seventh lord is in debility, so my married life is bad. Or my Venus is afflicted or debilitated, my married life is bad. No, it's not like that. Very clear. How do you decide a person's married life? So see, when you ask this question, how is my married life? You have to understand. The person is asking for a minimum period. So let's assume a person gets married somewhere in India within 25 to 30. Let's assume he gets married at 30. Okay. And let's assume he will live till 60. He may live till 90 also. But let's assume he lives till 60. So he is asking for a 30 year period of his life. 30 years. And if he gets married at 25, and he stays till 75. How many years is it? 50 years, my God. So it can range from 30 to 60 years, the married life. Okay. Somebody may get married at 23, stay till 83. So he or she is asking for 60 freaking years of his or her life. So how do you decide what happens? Well, very simple. You look at the dashas. The dashas ultimately tell you what, because the dashas will tell you the ups and downs within married life. Okay. So therefore, the answer to this question, apart from D9, we'll go to D9, but first the D9 part, and the D1 stuff first. How do you know uh, if a person will have a bad married life? Well, you have to analyze the dashas. So if you see the 
these five houses second fifth seventh ninth and eleventh primarily second seventh and eleventh are the houses of marriage and then we also have five and nine the three corners which support marriage support dharma okay so if you find that these four houses are prominently linked in the upcoming mahadashas for these 30 years then you know that the married life can be decent or it can be very good depending on how it is okay but suppose you see uh, primarily the sixth house very prominent so suppose a planet is in sixth house so let's take example of saturn saturn is in sixth house let's take saturn oh yeah saturn is a good example suppose saturn is in sixth house and he runs saturn mahadasha okay and let's say mercury uh, is the lord of the sixth house then he runs 17 years of mercury mahadasha later saturn mercury comes back to back so in that situation and then suppose uh, he run then he will run ketu mahadasha after saturn mercury there's ketu and suppose ketu is again in the sixth house so saturn ketu conjunction in virgo let's example and let's take this example okay so for Aries, Aries ascendant if that is the case then uh, the those do you calculate 19 years 17 years plus ketu mahadasha seven years so it's a huge span of time that so if suppose let's say the saturn mahadasha has started somewhere the person got married in 25 or 28 and saturn mahadasha starts at 30 then till 49 his saturn mahadasha will be there and then mercury 17 years so so these three planets will consume his entire life okay i mean from a perspective of marriage now during saturn situation will still be better why because saturn is the lord of the 11th house also for Aries ascendant okay so don't forget that take that into consideration so this is an example where you see back to back the planets are not well placed because sixth house is the house which is 12th from the seventh okay now suppose there are planets uh, this is a bad scenario which what is worse than this worse than this is if a planet is sitting in nakshatras of the sixth house or the sixth lord or of the planet in the sixth or the lord of the sixth so let me give you an example for Aries ascendant who is the sixth lord mercury so which nakshatras do mercury rule mercury rules uh Revati nakshatra for example okay then he rules aslesha then he rules jeshta so suppose Mercury is in any random house, but it still lords the sixth. Remember this. So then suppose you have Saturn, Saturn Mahadasha started, and Saturn is sitting in Jeshta Nakshatra. That adds to the problem. Why? Because for Aries, Jeshta will be in the eighth house because Scorpio is the eighth house, and Jeshta Nakshatra is in the sign of Scorpio. Remember that. So then the Nakshatra Lord of this Mahadasha Lord is Lord of the sixth house the Nakshatra Lord of the Mahadasha Lord <laughs> Nakshatra Lord me of the Mahadasha Lord means Saturn Mahadasha is going on it is sitting in the eighth house and the Lord of the Nakshatra where it sits is Jeshta which is Mercury is the Lord of the sixth house okay and then this situation worsens actually or suppose a planet is sitting in a particular planets nakshatra so let's take the example suppose saturn is sitting in eighth house uh, in vishakha nakshatra fourth pada of vishakha which falls in scorpio so for aries that will be the eighth house now who is the lord of vishakha it's jupiter suppose jupiter is sitting in the sixth then also it is like saying saturn is like in uh, jeshtha because then the planet which is the ruler of that nakshatra is also sitting in the sixth house although jupiter does not lord the sixth house for Aries ascendant okay so in case number one we saw mercury was the lord of the sixth so that then also it's a problem and if jupiter now as lord of vishakha sits in the sixth then also it's a problem now suppose if saturn is in anuradha then maybe it's not a very big problem because anuradha is ruled by saturn himself okay and the lord of that nakshatra is sitting there in the eighth house it's not sitting in the sixth actually at least 
now the next thing is if the nakshatra lord or that um, yeah if the nakshatra lord is sitting in a dusthana generally so sixth house is a dusthana but even eighth or the twelfth then also it adds gen in in a generic sense it adds trouble to your life so let's take example in this case um, uh, jupiter so suppose saturn is in scorpio or fourth pada of vishakha and then jupiter is the lord of vishakha nakshatra and jupiter is also sitting in the eighth house that is like double trouble or if guru is in sixth or it's in twelfth it's like double trouble okay so this also adds to the problem okay so suppose now uh, let's take the example suppose saturn was in sixth house okay it was in virgo it was in revati nakshatra and this revati is already loaded by mercury that's another problem the first problem is he is himself sitting there saturn is in sixth then the nakshatra lord is ruling the sixth then suppose mercury is either in pisces or scorpio this is like triple trouble <laughs> all right so three levels of trouble i have given you so why i am telling you all this negative and pinching stuff because many times you will not analyze all these and you will bluntly make distinction oh my is this married life is bad this is good so it's not that easy for for god's sake stop thinking astrology is easy it's not <laughs> okay so analyze it properly i have given you three levels of trouble okay so then you decide to what extent are these mahadasha planets so suppose uh, your venus mahadasha is starting so then it becomes more complicated why because after venus the mahadashas which you have they are very short okay so suppose you got married at 25 and at 30 your venus mahadasha starts okay suppose venus is in a particular place so then till 50 because venus is 20 years okay then you have venus then after venus you have sun which is only 6 years then you have moon which is 10 years then you have again mars okay so then the married life can be up and down more or if all all these four uh, venus sun moon mars are good then the married life will uh, be very good or if all these are bad then the married life may go down okay or if suppose venus is good then the married life will be good then if sun is bad then down moon good mars even good or better or worse okay so therefore you have to understand that this is how you judge somebody's married life and there are tens of other parameters which i can keep giving it to you giving you always but the thing is then you will become too much negative you will start thinking all this so so that's why let me limit this to here so this is like first level second level third level so three levels of disaster i have given okay so this is only for your lagna chart first analyze all this do not jump to the navamsha don't think that if you have a planet well placed for marriage which means it is somehow linked with the second seventh eleventh and or the fifth or the ninth and it is debilitated in navamsha it will give you bad marriage no never think like that okay so that is point number 1 you first analyze the d1 okay there is no compromise with this forget the navamsha throw the navamsha into uh, garbage jala dalo apne navamsha first you do this then you go to navamsha okay don't use navamsha as a hanky panky which means you don't know how to study a horoscope which means you don't know how to study d1 you just know some basic uh, idiotic rules which are not actually true which are not written in the classics basically and then what you do when you don't see the results according to your own uh, fake judgment then you go and keep hammer, hammering on the navamsha oh actually yeah you know this was destined to be bad because it was sitting in the 8th house of navamsha okay this was sitting in 12th house of navamsha oh my god what about the houses in lords in d1 my dear sir my dear madam please see the d1 first okay so before getting into competition with uh, the navamsha don't ignore the d1 okay that's the problem in youtube uh, people have forgotten that there is a lagna chart also they think that you just check the divisional charts and then that's gone because everything happens physically ultimately okay so anybody who ignores the d1 and goes to any other fancy divisional chart i don't give a damn it's d1 uh, it's d2 d3 d5 d9 d20 d1000 or d million your predictions will fail 100% okay 
what what to speak of predictions failing you won't even be able to predict anything because you will just keep playing this hanky panky so what you will think oh my venus is here in d1 in d9 is debilitated d10 it's exalted so what happens mm, confusing right <laughs> so don't play this game of mixing out cancelling out things okay here good bad good bad good bad another thing in youtube very famous this is there is it good bad good bad good bad good bad so after 20 years also i have seen people i know some people they send me mails they tell me that oh i am learning from this great institution in new delhi i won't take name india capital of india new delhi very big astrological institutes and then then they ask me such questions my seventh lord is in debility what do you think will happen i'm like what have you learned for 20 years this is what you have learned seven fold in debility means bad marriage no it doesn't work like that okay so learn things properly not like this hanky panky it's like you are throwing one thing here this is exalted this is debilitated catch it catch me catch him catch her no it doesn't work like that <laughs> so now you have analyzed all these parameters hopefully and many other parameters then you go to your navamsha chart okay now suppose let's take two scenarios your d1 is very good okay which means good means according to these factors okay and then you see that in your navamsha there are some difficulties so then what do you do <laughs> so there can be four scenarios good d1 bad d9 good d1 good d9 bad bad d1 bad d9 <laughs> confusing see all four scenarios so good 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 bad 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 or good bad bad good all right so now if the trines of both the navamsha and the lagna chart they are strong okay which means the trines which means the lagna lord fifth lord ninth lord and sun and moon these planets if they are strong in the navamsha and in the lagna chart then what happens then suppose you have a bad d1 then externally all these problems will be there okay your spouse may not be cooperative suppose you have as i gave the example saturn in 6th house uh uh in revati nakshatra okay so uh, now saturn is in 6th and revati is lorded by mercury which is also the 6th lord which is suppose in uh Eighth house. Let's take an example. So then it can happen. And suppose your trinal lords are very well placed. So then what can happen is, you will see that maybe due to some reason you are not able to stay with your spouse physically. Okay, which means which doesn't mean you divorce or you uh, stay separately. But maybe you have to travel somewhere for your work, or maybe your uh, husband or wife's parents have had some issues, so they have to go and stay with them. You cannot stay together. So these kind of issues can come sixth house doesn't give divorce or break up or separation it gives physical separation also okay but your trinal lords are well placed that means uh, in the lagna chart uh, you are happy internally so that means you are not fighting and quarreling 24 hours okay then that happens when the trinal lords are badly placed along with these difficult placements so now suppose uh, your navamsha is uh, very bad okay so very bad means uh, somehow the lagna lord is not very well placed the trinal lords are not very good okay so you judge the nav navamsha overall so suppose your uh, trinal lords of your d1 they are very well placed and then the uh, navamsha is not very good so then what does what happens the navamsha represents fruits from your past lives so then what will happen even though you are happy which means you are physically separated or you are staying somewhere she is staying somewhere but uh, because of this uh, navamsha's difficult placements it can be a bit difficult for you to maintain that situation which means it might happen that that physical separation can continue for a relatively longer period of time okay but suppose the navamsha is very good then what will happen even though the physical separation is there you will be more happier inside okay now let's take the other scenario you have uh, you have that 6th house prominent all these problems are there 
and your trinal lords are also badly placed of the lagna chart d1 okay and sun and moon lagnesh these are not well placed then what will happen you may quarrel or you may divorce or you may fight 24 hours you may stay together but then uh, uh, you may be frustrated or you may indulge in affairs these kind of things can happen if the fifth house involves and now uh, case number three okay bad d1 <laughs> bad d1 means already there are marital, marital issues but this time the trinal lords are also not well placed and then you have uh, bad navamsha okay then you might get into depression and that is when your married life may suffer very badly okay and now case number four when these marital issues are there in d1 and the trinal lords are also badly placed but the navamsha is very good so then what happens is uh because of the navamsa's uh, grace or because of blessings of lord vishnu even though things are very bad in the d1 okay and even though you feel that you are getting into depression but you will have some friend or some relative or some guru or some colleague with whom you can talk and discuss and you can be in a peaceful state of mind although you will you may be in depression you may fight you may be too much in anxiety you may have high blood pressure high insulin all these things maybe they are because of your married life but you will always feel that there is somebody who i can go and talk about, even though the problems persist okay and you have a greater possibility to come out of those problems okay so therefore these are the four conditions in which uh so among these four you see only in one case uh, the navamsha if the navamsha is very bad only in one condition that affects the marriage very badly okay you feel that like case number 3 as i said you feel there is no support or something like this okay so so therefore in that to that case also you have to judge very particularly you have to be very meticulous when you judge okay so if the fifth lord is not well placed that will have a different flavor if the ninth lord is not well placed that will have a different flavor okay so you cannot just blindly make statements oh this is good that is bad no no it's not like that and therefore uh, next time when you uh, want to know if the navamsha will ruin your marriage okay just 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 having a bad navamsha doesn't do that okay and even within the navamsha there can be so many different energies so let let's talk with some examples suppose your uh, venus in the navamsha is well placed it's in libra or taurus or pisces and then if your uh, trinal lords are not well placed then what do you say is it a good navamsha or a bad navamsha <laughs> that's a very tricky question the answer is this is a wrong question because now why did i ask this question because you you, you keep asking these questions okay my uh, lagna lord of d1 is exalted but my venus is in debility okay so here i am giving you the opposite scenario venus the atma karaka for the navamsha is in good dignity it's either in taurus libra or um, pisces but your uh, so called lagnesh of the d9 lagna lord suppose you are a uh, uh, leo lagna okay in d9 and then sun is not well placed so then what happens that will have a different flavor and suppose your moon is not well placed that will have a different flavor suppose you have the eighth lord in the navamsha lagna that will have a different flavor okay so before you even claim that my navamsha is very bad you have to analyze it properly you have to know what's actually going on don't just whimsically make judgments that oh this is terrible this is good this is bad no you have to analyze the navamsha properly after analyzing the d1 okay don't throw the d1 out if the d1 is not there i don't know what level of madness is going on in this world if the d1 d1 is not there if the d1 is not required then i mean it's like saying my guru used to say oh i am married in general so you cannot be married in general you have to be married to one person how can you say i'm just married no you you are married to a person right so for god's sake don't throw the d1 out i don't know everybody is doing this these days these days when i do ma marriage consultations i tell okay your dasha lord is here there this will happen that will happen from the d1 
and then they are like uh, what sir uh, so let me give an example suppose as i said saturn is in uh, sixth house okay or uh, aries ascendant in virgo suppose and uh, that is saturn is in hasta nakshatra for example okay so then suppose this ruler of hasta moon is again in 12th house okay moon is in pisces suppose moon is in revati and revati is again ruled by mercury which is the sixth lord here so it's like 2 3 4 5 times more the trouble and one person i uh, did a reading he had some similar placements like this but what happened is this uh, this planet which was in the 6th that was uh, in the 9th house of namamsha okay and he heard that 9th house of the namamsha shows luck bhagya fortune and all this over. so bhagya means i asked him what do you mean by bhagya what is bhagya 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 all the time bhagya khulega bhagya uday bhagya ye ho gaya bhagya doob gaya bhagya aa gayi ye ho gaya matlab what do you mean by bhagya do you know what is the meaning of the word bhagya is it bhagya means everything should be good nice peaceful i should have lot of money so basically he thinks bhagya means to become a millionaire basically you can do whatever you want buy whatever you want go to europe go to usa you know have a trip go to kullu manali do what you want whenever it's like uh, that's not bhagya <laughs> bhagya means when you are connected to god that is bhagya because the word bhagya comes from bhagwan that is bhagya okay bhagya means mercy something which you get which you don't deserve that is bhagya it's not this is not bhagya get, getting million <laughs> okay so then then i said to him, no, sir uh, maybe may your mind like maybe bit challenging in this coming antar dasha because these indications are there and then he told me that oh sir how are you saying like this it seems you don't know any jyotish huh? this planet is in 9th house of navamsha it is giving me bhagya mera bhagya uday ho jayega then i said bhagya uday will happen but it's not the way the you the way you think bhagya uday so i said your bhagya uday will happen because that planet is in navamsha's ninth house this torture of the marriage will make you very spiritual and then he was like oh don't tell me like this this is not bhagya uday this is uh, this is bad this is not nice i want to become spiritual but not like this i said that's what i see <laughs> Okay, so just because a planet is in Navamsha's ninth house, it doesn't uh, grant you some uh, million dollars. Okay, your bhagya day will not happen. It will happen, but not the way you think. Okay, so that experience will make you more spiritual. Okay, but then uh, all the words fall in deaf ears if because these people sometimes they see some videos in YouTube. and then they will make some conception oh blind rules ninth house means bhagya day will happen the moment the navamsha lagna's planet ninth house or the ninth lord gets activated oh money will start flowing like anything but what if that planet is a malefic <laughs> what if that planet the ninth lord is in the eighth what will happen loss of money can happen all right but loss of dharma can happen not necessarily money but these days everybody is just like every house they will think it's a monetary house so the third house gives you money yes there are other houses second house sixth house tenth house and then there is the eleventh house but you cannot put attributes to every house like this people do this i have seen okay they will they will make every house about what they want okay anyways i can go on and on speaking but uh the point which i want to stress here is that before you judge the d1 and d9 please judge the d1 and then before you make fancy conclusions about even your d9 analyze it very properly okay without that please don't get into conclusions right because that can ruin your mental peace even if it doesn't ruin your marriage <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your love, romance, married life, relationships, you can go to the website down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to Him, and you will find Him.